everyone, this is Heather Smith from Storyville Photography, and today I'm going to show you how to achieve this edit. But first, some exciting news, guys. There is now an option over on the Storyville website for you to submit an image for the chance of seeing it edited on the Storyville YouTube channel. So exciting. You will receive credit on both the YouTube channel and social media, and you can submit RAW or JPEG to here. All you need to do is go to the um, Storyville website, to the tutorial section and click the submit a chance to get a photo edited and then you click that and it will take you to this you fill out your name you can also put your business name if you'd like and your email address you'll hit send and it will take you to here where you will upload your photo and you'll do it via Dropbox very very exciting so I can't wait to see all your images flood my inbox Okay, so the first image that I'm going to be editing from one of you guys is from the fabulous Heather Bailey um, of Dreams in a Flash Photography. I chose this image because I saw so much potential and wanted to show you guys that you can still do an amazing edit on a JPEG. So this is like the before the straight out of a camera, and this is where we will end up. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and make a copy of my background layer, Command J, and then I'm going to go up to Filters, Camera Raw, and I'm going to pull the shadows completely up. A lot of times people will say there's a ton of grain when you shoot JPEG or you're editing a JPEG, um, and there's a little bit, but we're going to take some steps on smoothing it out as we go along. Such a cute image. I just love it and adore it. So, so cute. Oops, while I was in there, I also wanted to warm it up a little bit. You can do it in two steps or all in one. I just was talking and completely forgot. So I'm going to just increase it till my eye likes it to about 22% there. So this is the before and after, just pulling the shadows up and increasing the white balance. And now the next thing I want to do, you can do this on the same layer or flatten it and do another layer, whatever you prefer. I'm just going to go ahead and use the same layer. If you're going to Actually, because some of you might want to make adjustments to this, I'm going to flatten it so I can show you how to do that. So flatten that, another copy, Command J. I'm going to go into the Camera Raw filter, and then I'm going to go into the presets, and I'm going to choose Simplicity preset number 5. I'm going to keep it at 100%, but if you wanted it lower or just, you know, like half, of the preset on there. Um, you can adjust the opacity using that slider. And then I'm going to come into my ultimate dodge and burn and I'm going to hit play. I'm going to open this up. And then I'm going to start down here with the clothing. I'm going to go to the extra burn, soft white brush, 100% opacity, and I'm going to just darken her little tutu skirt. So, so cute. And some of the creases on her jacket. Okay, and then I'm going to come into the extra dodge and I'm going to hit some of the highlight parts of her jacket. I'm going to leave the skirt alone. And then I'm going to take it to zero and then just kind of increase it to my where my eye likes it. You guys are probably so sick of hearing me say that. But around 40% looks good to me. So that's the before and after there. Then I'm going to come up to the skin and hair. I prefer to use the um, Brighten Skin with the Retouch, but I love using the Burn. So I'm going to go ahead and skip over the Dodge here, and I'm just going to kind of burn a little bit of the shadows in her face and a little bit up here by her hair. And go ahead and hit her little bow there too. Okay. And that looks good. Now I'm going to come into the environment and I'm going to do the extra burn. I'm going to go all over this image. Oh, make sure you have a white brush because you're painting on a black mask. I'm just going to darken that up a little bit. And then I'm going to come through with the extra dodge and I'm going to definitely decrease this. Just want to pull some of the highlights out. There we go. 
and that looks good to me. So that's the before and after with the ultimate dodge and burn. And now I'm going to flatten this image by going to layer, flatten image, and I want to run the painterly action. So Storyville painterly, play. A lot of times when you're working with a JPEG, it is going to come on really strong. Um, definitely dial it back or it can get a little wonky. So I'm starting at zero and I'm just going to increase it till I like it. <laughs> I'm going to wipe it completely off of her face and her fingers. Here we go. Okay. And then I want to turn on the color dazzle. I'm going to decrease it and just slowly increase it to bring a little bit more color into the image. Such a gorgeous image. And that's the before and after with the Storyville Painterly. So now what I want to do is I want to replace the sky with some clouds. And Photoshop has made this really easy over the years. I'm going to flatten this. And then all you do is go to the image. No, nope, just kidding. Go to the edit sky replacement and then you can upload different skies or you can just use what Photoshop already has in there I chose this sky and then I'm gonna hit OK and it does a pretty good job with filling it in um, it can make some things look wonky so there are some adjustments that we'll need to do um, the first thing I want to do is I like adding a layer mask to the whole group soft black brush 100% opacity I'm going to take it completely off of her and over here on some of my trees. And now I want to kind of, if, if you see the clouds here are just too in focused, which doesn't work well with the blurry background. So I'm going to select the sky. I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just kind of make it match up a little bit. That looks pretty good to me. Um, be a little bit stronger. So that's the preview. You can turn that on and off and kind of see how you'd like it. I'm going to hit OK. And now I want to actually change the tone of the sky, which is another really easy step you can do. My personal preference is the selective color. I go into the neutrals. In here, I want to do the cyan. I'm going to bump it up 19. And I want to turn my magentas down 19, actually, so negative 1, 9. And I'm going to use this little arrow, so it's only going to affect the sky. That's the before and after there. So now I want to go ahead and flatten this. And I need to add some blur to this background, guys, because um, this just isn't blending well. To do that, I'm going to do Command-J. And then I'm going to go back into my Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to take it up to about, I don't know, 8%. Add a layer mask. I'm going to invert it, Command-I. And with a white brush, I'm going to paint on like some of my trees and the sky again. And just make it blend a little bit better together. Kind of get in there. You don't really want a halo um, or anything wonky, so definitely spend the time um, if you're printing it out or doing this for a client. So, okay. That's the before and after. Made a huge difference and it really made our subject pop without the distractions of the tree line there. Okay. Layer flatten. And I'm going to do another blur. So, Command J. And this time I'm going to increase the blur quite a bit. Um, I keep wanting to go for my shortcut, but I don't know if your shortcut is the same. So again, my shortcut's Command F, but the Gaussian blur. And I'm going to take this up to about 40-ish percent, 43%. Mask, invert it by Command I, soft white brush. And I'm going to create a little bit more depth of field by just kind of dabbing off to the side here and bringing some more focus onto her. You can do it wherever you want. That's just where I feel like doing it. And then I'm gonna add a layer mask. And I wanna come up here and grab my like floating particles brush. Turn it down and just kinda, yeah, that's still a little bit too big there. Just add a little bit of dimension 
little um, environment there. So that's the before and after with the floating particles brush. And now I want to come in and work on the sweet girl a little bit. So I'm going to come back and grab my soft wet, um, black, we'll do, ah, we'll see what I'm doing here. <laughs> I think we'll be using a white brush, but give me just a second here. So I can go ahead and flatten that. I'm happy there. And if you can see when I um, painted on, I already deleted or flattened it, but there is slight halo. So if I was like printing this for a client, I would go back and be a little bit more um, cautious of that and with my masking. I just don't want you to make the same mistake, but um, okay. So over to my actions, I want to come into my Storyville retouch and I'm going to get the Brighten Skin and Eyes. Play, continue, open the grouping up, and I'm going to first start with the Brighten Skin. I'm gonna go ahead and just click on here in our hands. And then I'm going to take that to zero and just kind of slowly go up. And that looks good to me. I'm going to come over here to the Brighten Eyes. I'm just going to click. And then brighten catch lights. And you can just use the X to go back and forth between your black and your white brushes. Turn that down a little bit more. Okay. So that's the before and after with the brighten skin and eyes. And now I want to come into the rosy cheeks. Play. Open. I'm going to do the vibrant coral. Soft white brush. Turn it up to about 15, looks good. So that's the before and after. And then I just kind of want to get rid of like a little bit of, I wouldn't call them circles, just kind of lines under her eyes. Flatten, you can also keep them. Um, but in this case, I'm gonna get rid of it a little bit. So I'm going to grab the patch tool and just do a rough selection there. You want to make sure not to get too close to the eye like I just did because you don't want to take her like bottom eyelid away. Guys, okay. Here we go. I bet I did the same thing over there. Don't be me. Take your time. And then I'm going to just lower that so you're getting like a little bit of it there, but not too much before and after. Okay. Now I want to add some sun behind her, kind of fake it. Um, so to do that, I am going to go ahead and grab Story of El Sun number two, drag and drop it, set it to screen mode. That will get rid of the black. I'm going to move it up kind of to the right of her. You can size it just by pulling on these little squares. That looks good to me. I'm going to add a little Gaussian blur to it. So again, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. About 43% looks good. And I want to add somewhat of a flare there. So custom flare. And then I'm going to go into five, drag and drop, screen. I'm going to pull it to like right here. You can expand if you'd like, move it around, just whatever feels right to you. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of a blur to that. Gaussian blur. Turn it down to like, I don't know, four looks good to me. Okay, and then I also kind of wanted to decrease the saturation here. So I am going to grab a hue and saturation. I am going to go ahead and, sorry, my husband was just calling it, distracted me. Just turn it down a little bit so it's not like so strong. Okay, and that looks good. Okay, now I want to do another hue and um, 
saturation adjustment layer and work on her skirt a little bit. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to use this little dropper tool and that's going to take me to my magentas. And then I'm going to go ahead and just increase this till I like um, the color a little bit more. It's a cute color, but I'm, I like more of the, the coral. I'm more of a coral girl, I guess you could say. And I'm going to go ahead and click over here. It's going to take me to my blues. It should. It did before. There we go. Oh, where did it go? Come on, blue. Or I can just come over here to my blues because I know that that's what that is. And I'm going to turn that up so it all kind of blends together. Before and after, little details can make like such a huge difference. And now I'm going to go ahead and grab my black and I want to pull more attention to her. Ah, this is off of my screen, but I'm going to go to this little icon and the second one down is gradient. I wanted a black. Okay. Here we go. Black gradient. I'm going to go to the radial, reverse it. Okay. Soft light. And I'm going to turn this down to zero and just follow how my eye likes it. And that looks good. And then I want to go ahead and grab an adjustment layer and pull up my highlights a little bit. And that looks good before and after there, before and after there. And the last thing I want to do, flatten the image, come over to my actions panel again, and I'm going to run the smooth in action, um, smoothing and sharpening. Make sure that you have a flattened background before you hit play. And this is going to come on really intense. I'm going to turn it down and I'm going to use it really lightly here. About 25%, 26% looks good. This is going to also come on strong. Like, whoa, crazy, right? Okay, turn off the contrast and brighten because I just don't need it for this image to zero. And I'm just going to creep up slowly. And that looks good to me. So that about does it, guys. Thank you, Heather, so much for letting me play around with your image. It was absolutely gorgeous and such a pleasure to work on. This is the before and this is the after. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I can't wait to see your images. Bye.